This is the Weibo 3S gimbal. Let's see how good it is. The lovely people at Zion sent me this gimbal to test out and give my honest opinion of it. So we're gonna go and try to create with it and see how good it can perform and see if it's the right gimbal for you. Honestly, to balance this is quite easy. I have the Zion Crane Pro 2S, I believe it is. And that one takes me a lot longer to balance out, especially even with a small one, but obviously a lot harder whenever I have my 35 to 150 to balance on that one since it has more of a heavyweight kind of style. But with this one, quite fast, which is really nice because if you're on the go and need to be really fast and efficient, it's always nice to have a nice gimbal that you can kind of balance out and be ready for you know anything that you need to do. So the main goal is going to be to create some kind of video portrait style of a lifestyle kind of shoot. We're gonna be doing a little bit more wintry since, well, as you guessed it, it's a little bit of winter and we're gonna see what we can create with this because I'm just gonna kind of splice the, a little bit of video together and see my experience with it. And then after, talk about more about how the setup was and what I like about it, what I don't like about it and see how good it could be for you. Now that we're back from shooting, I want to talk a little bit about the specs and then I'm going to be talking about my user experience with this gimbal. First off, the price point of just getting the gimbal by itself without the accessories comes at 319 USD. And if you want to do the combo that comes with the accessories, the bag and things like that, it comes in at 439 USD. For me personally, I would recommend getting the one with the accessories, not because it's just more money, but because the accessories actually do work really well. The extension of the handle is quite nice to be able to pair with the wrist support. The wrist support and both of them like that, it just allows you to have a much more stable footage as well as just less pain on your body. For me personally, having to shoot and walk around with a gimbal is never the most exciting thing to do because of how heavy and kind of annoying it can be because of how much pressure on your wrist and your arms it can be from carrying your gear around. But using this wrist support, to be honest, probably like my most favorite feature when it comes down to this gimbal, besides the handle as well to pair it with, it's really quite nice. Now for the more of the specs when it comes down to this gimbal, there's a couple of things that are really cool in my opinion. The battery when it comes down to this gimbal, it can run up to 11 and a half hours, which to me is a lot and more than enough time to create as much content as you need to, especially because you know that you can turn it off and turn it on and you're kind of good to go to make the battery probably last longer you're not going to be continuously shooting for 11 and a half hours more than likely so with that being said it will kind of you know last you all day if you need to whenever i got this gimbal out of the bag it already came with a full charge and i didn't even have to charge it when i went to go shoot and it still has pretty much a full battery left yeah granted i didn't go out and shoot for like 11 and a half hours but you know, it's still pretty nice to know that it would last me a very long time. Another cool thing that you have whenever it comes down to this gimbal is just having the accessories that you have in the sense of like the little wheel to be able to do the panning as well as your little joystick 
and a little bit of just kind of your buns that you would have in most gimbals. But it's nice to just have them a little bit accessible to do basically one-handed. The little joystick can be a little bit more of a hassle to do one-handed, but it's more than doable, especially with the handle. And this is one of the reasons why I say you should want to get that because you're able to kind of move it around easier while holding onto it with the handle. Another thing that this gimbal has is, well, this light right here. So if you're wanting to shoot some, I don't know, darker images or anything like that, that like you're out and about and you don't have any other light, it's a decent enough light to just capture something. Is it gonna be as good as my key light? Probably not, but at least you'll have something that'll help you out to light up your subject or anything whenever you're out and about and you need just some sort of lighting that you don't wanna have like, for example, my Aperture MC lights that I use. It's hard to just mount it on something. So at least having that right about there whenever you're shooting does have a little bit of a benefit. Now, another thing that I think is really great when it comes down to this setup is if you really want to, you can add all the other accessories like that I have for my Crane, uh, the Pro 2S, because I'm able to do the transmitter that I already have to use and everything, and it'll allow it to still be well enough balanced and everything. I personally don't really use it that much because I'm not gonna be doing too crazy of stuff, but it's good to have that option as well as connecting your camera to the gimbal if you want to so that you're able to as well hit record from over here. And that's pretty much into the specs part that I think is the most important part that I would personally use. Much of other stuff is just kind of the generic gimbal stuff that you might come into. So that's one of the things. But the most important thing to know about this gimbal is the payload of weight that you can put onto it. See, when it comes down to this setup is my Tamron 20 to 40 with a Sony a7S III that I use, which is not that heavy of a setup. If you're wanting to use a gimbal that would be for a larger camera or bigger lens, like my 35 to 150, I would not recommend getting this gimbal because it's not going to be, well, working the way it should and you're probably going to damage it and probably not have a gimbal for that long of a time. But now let's talk about who this gimbal could be for before I talk about my experience with it. I think that this gimbal is really great for the people that need to have a gimbal that'll last them a long time for shooting as well for the portability and the ease of use without having to hurt your body. For example, if you're a wedding videographer or maybe you shoot a lot of content for cars or something outside for like sports, this is pretty great to have when it comes down to having a simple gimbal that is not too heavy and it has good support for the wrist and the handles. But obviously you might have a little bit of a drawback when it comes down to the lens setup, but if you're shooting that type of content or even for businesses and everything for tight spots, you'll have more than enough bang for your buck in that aspect for the size of it, as well to be able to use this kind of setup to do the videos from that end. For me personally, for like wedding and events videographers, this is perfect because it does have really nice support, which I truly enjoy so that your wrist, you know, doesn't hurt as well with the handle and you get the longevity of the battery and you're able to still use a good enough lens, like maybe a 24 to 70, 20 to 40, like this style where you can get a good range of, you know, focal range so that you're able to capture more than everything that you would need for your videos. Now, if you're wanting to, you know, have a bigger payload when it comes down to the setup, definitely not the, the gimbal for you, but that's pretty much it when it comes down to what I would recommend when it comes down to a gimbal like this. It's really great for fast on the go because the balancing of this gimbal was rather quite fast to do compared to what I've done with my Crane 2S. It's just a lot smoother to do with this one. It took me almost little to no time that it was just quite nice to be able to just set it up, be good to go and just go out to shoot, which makes it very user friendly. But now speaking about user friendly, I'm gonna talk about my experience using this gimbal. This gimbal personally for me is very easy to use. There has a little bit of quirks here and there like any other product you'll ever have. Nothing is going to be perfect but overall my experience with it was quite nice. Despite of Zion sending it to me to test it out and make a video about it, this is my honest experience with it, whether I guess if they like it or not. For me personally, I think the best thing about it, like I said, was using that wrist support and the handle. It made it so much easier to get those low angle shots and as well as just any movement that I had to do because it would have good support that I wouldn't get overly tired like I would with my Crane 2S. So one of my favorite things about it in all honesty is being able to kind of bend down and being able to follow 
my subject with it and be able to get my screen out and see it while I'm doing those low angle type of shots without having to rebalance anything too crazily because the balancing of it and I guess they're kind of like if you will algorithm of it has a really good setup so that it can kind of rebalance itself even if it's a little bit of a difference whenever I zoom in zoom out or anything like that you kind of have that little bit of that extra kind of balancing that it would do so that nothing gets too shifted or anything that is struggling within the motors itself. For me, I thought it was really great when it came down to shooting a lot of the walking and kind of movement where I could follow my subject long periods of time where I didn't feel like I was struggling to keep up. Was it the most easy thing in the world because I'm the best at gimbals? Probably not, but it's still pretty good to use, like I said, for ease of use. If you're not a pro gimbal user like myself, I use gimbals for certain specific of things, but I'm not the best at them. But I like to have a gimbal that can be easy to use like this one. One of my little bit of a gripe is one of the reasons why I say you probably need to have the accessory bundle is because when you're shooting, if you don't have your hand correctly, you're, you might slip a little bit on the little kind of knob thing right here or the joystick to be able to pan up and down or anything. It's a little bit harder to do with one hand without the support. So having that handle allows me to move it a lot easier so that I'm able to follow focus or anything that I need to for my subject with the gimbal and I can follow them and keep my subject in focus and everything as the camera does its job with the you know tracking of it or anything like that. Other than that, I think it's pretty great. I mean, to be honest, it's just more of just getting used to it to put your hand down here rather than up here to move it. And for me, I kind of got used to it rather fast and I thought it was really great to use personally. For the price point, I think it's still pretty great when it comes down to having a fast and easily accessible gimbal that won't take up too much space. Compared to my Crane 2S, it's a little bit more hectic to travel around with it or bring it too much with me because of the size of it, because it's for a heavier payload. And this, if I want to have a little bit of stable footage that I would want to have for certain scenarios where I have my 20 to 40, where I shoot more at the 35 or 40 range, or if you want to have a 20 to 4 to 70 kind of style, you're able to get really good smooth footage as well as pairing it up with a smaller camera if you ever wanted to, like a ZB-E1 or A7C Mark II to have better stabilization like dynamic active stabilization. So overall, my experience with it was more positive than negative. The main gripe for me was just a little bit of the buttons, but other than that, it was really great to use. Didn't really need to use much of that little bit of the light over here since we're out and about and during the day, but it's nice to have that as a backup option, which mm, mainly for me, I probably won't use it that often, but it'd be good to have just in case if you're needing some extra light to light up a subject that's in front of you. If you don't care to have a quote unquote cinematic look to it, because at the end of the day, nothing's gonna, you know, kind of trample over having a good key light or nice source of light that would be just nicer than just a smaller light that it's not going to be the best out there. But overall, this is my experience with this setup and testing out this Weeble 3S. Thank you so much for Sion for sending it over to be able to test out and make this video for you guys. And hopefully it'll clarify any uh, questions that you might have when it comes down to knowing if this gimbal would be the right for you, or maybe you're trying to look for something else because Zion has a lot of different options. And me personally, I've bought my Zion Crane the gimbals before, before they even reached out to send this to me. So just to clarify that, so you don't think I'm just giving you some, you know, biased answer or anything, but at the end of the day, I guess we're all biased if we're using certain products because we enjoy them. With that being said, I've used Zion for years now and I've really truly enjoyed their gimbals before. So I was very excited and very happy to be able to work with them for this video. And I appreciate anybody that's watching it this far to be able to, you know, I guess figure out if this is the gimbal for you. But if you have any questions about anything when it comes down to this video, the gimbal or any concerns that you might have regarding what you saw today, please leave a comment down below and I'd be more than happy to help you guys out to see what I can clarify for you to make your purchase a lot easier if you're looking to get a gimbal. But if you want to pick up this gimbal, make sure to check out the links in my description and hopefully it'll help you out when it comes down to purchasing your gimbal. But with all that said and done, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video with a friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.